everybody, it's Dr. Rick dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having a great weekend. Hope that uh, you're enjoying uh, whatever it is you set out to do. For those of you who have had to work uh, like myself, I hope that you had a productive start to your day. Uh, as I prepare to start to unwind uh, and get into a more lighter part of my weekend, going to do so on a very heavy note because it's something that has been immensely passionate. I've been immensely passionate about something that has been uh, something dear to me. Uh, before I get started, I just want to remind everybody, if you believe in the work that we do at the Odyssey Project, if you believe in who I've been and what I've done and what I continue to do, uh, we definitely need you to show some love and support and donate uh, to the organization. The information for you to donate is in the description box. And I'm going to get right into this. Uh, unless you've been on the rock or you are one of those people who I envy who don't have to spend time on social media and choose not to do so. Uh, I literally promote brand and run my businesses. Uh, and social media is a major part of that. So while I do a lot of it through uh, CMS and CRM systems, uh, I still have to uh, engage content and be aware of things in order to be able to address the things <laughs> that are out there. Uh, so I get a lot of things. Plus, something like this will come across my desk anyway because I'm a part of the media. Uh, Carly Russell, young lady, um, Southern Bible Belt, uh, Hoover, Alabama, if I'm not mistaken. Um, driving along on the phone. Um, tells the person on the phone there's a toddler walking along the interstate and decides to pull up and give, give help. I think she even makes a phone call to officials saying, hey, look, uh, the person on the phone hears her scream. By the time the uh, official, law enforcement officials get there, toddler hurt, nowhere to be found. Um, she's been missing now for a couple of days. Her name is Carly Russell. If you see any of my social media pages, you're going to see a picture of Carly. Uh, share that. Get it out. I have incessantly for more than a decade been talking about the disproportionate disproportionality of black women who go missing in direct proportion to our population in this country. I've been doing this for more than a decade. I've been talking about when I first started talking, it was 64,000 black women missing in America, unaccounted for, some missing for years. Um, and unaccounted for. And I talked about how our women and our girls don't get the same media coverage when they go missing as white girls. It's just simply is, you can say, don't play, play the race card. This isn't about race, this is about truth. This is about the fact that our women are undervalued. Um, and it's our responsibility to give them value, to give their life meaning, to, 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 to say that every black life has value and that we care about our women and our girls and we're not going to turn our head and they are not going to be easy targets and that we will stand up in our communities and we will start to answer the bell. We cannot continue to do this. I've been talking about this for years. This young lady is just the latest and it's the most grotesque because they literally used what almost every woman, regardless of race, but definitely black women are gonna respond to. A child walking by themselves along the side of the road, gonna respond to it. It's so many people that could have been outside of her, many of them in my family. And that should be the uh, that should be the perspective. That should be the viewpoint in the framing of this. Is that that could have been your mother, your sister, your daughter that that happened to, and.
your niece, cousin, it happened to, best friend, it happened to, and now you have parents torn up, I mean, just torn up, I can't imagine, it's, 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 it's bad enough to have a child be a part of a tragedy, but when you don't know where your baby is, and they were just snatched up, and there's this terror flowing through every or ounce of your being, as you try to muster the strength to push and fight to find your baby and you don't have the power to produce the end result that you want that sense of hopelessness is a horror and these people are living it and people are living it consistently 37 black women make roughly about make up roughly about 7% of the total population of this country. They make up 37 to 40% of the population that goes missing. There's a lot that goes into that, but none of it is by accident or arbitrary. Black women are seen as easy targets. Black women come from a social, as a general rule, come from a socioeconomic uh demographic that is not going to have the means for which to put up and make a bunch of noise. Black women come from a socioeconomic and social demographic where there is not a lot of value placed on their lives. And what does that mean? That means that that means that I can snatch her and if I get away clean I've got a good chance of getting away with her. And I've told you that there's a lot going on that we don't like to talk about when it comes to missing black women. Yeah, some of it is on that thing that everybody loves to talk about uh, because it stirs up the gender uh, contention within the black community and that's intimate partner violence, uh, intimate partner homicide, and it does happen. The vast majority of this is based and due to something else, and it starts with human trafficking, sex trafficking, and we need to be more cognizant of our surroundings. We need to have more uh, community trainings on recognizing signs of being stalked, observed, and surveilled so that we know when we're being watched. We need to have our men on alert to be aware when our women are moving in situations in which they need to be covered. We are vulnerable, we are exposed, and we are being attacked, and our women are not safe, and I cannot stress this enough. We will be judged at the end of this thing, whenever this happens, whenever there is a true bearing out of it all, we're gonna be judged by how well we handled, treated, and covered and protected our women. And as long as we are okay, and I say okay, I don't mean okay in the sense that people are going around like, oh well, I mean okay that it doesn't move us enough to action. To me, if it doesn't move me to action, it means that I'm giving my silence, my silent condemnation to it. It's the same thing of what when I'm talking about incest in the black community, when I'm talking about childhood sexual abuse in the community. Simply saying that I never said it was okay doesn't mean you don't condone it. It means that you're silenced by the very nature of its inactivity uh, in stopping it is condoning it. That's called silent condemnation. So when we don't take action, when we don't move, when we, when we don't act forcefully and specifically and with full intent and direction and, 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 and force, we're basically saying it's okay. You know, saying, oh my God, shaking my head, horrible, you know, and even sharing it, even though we do need to share it, we need to get as many of those images out there as possible. That's not going to change what's going on. What's going to change it is it's going to need to become dangerous to put your hands on a black woman. It's going to need to become dangerous to try to kidnap and take a black woman. It's going to need to become dangerous 
to have black women pushing and pimped in the sex trade. It's going to need to become dangerous to, to be mishandling or mistreating or doing anything negative to a black woman, period. That is going to have to be the dynamic and the approach to it. It's that simple. There's no other way around that. That is going to have to be our approach. That's going to have to be how we look at and view things, how we act, how we operate, how we move. And that message needs to be sent consistently and clearly on a regular basis. Um, and I, 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 I want to really and truly get this over to you that this just can't be acceptable and while obviously there's this oh my god to this particular thing anybody who follows me knows this has been a message that I've been preaching for years and so it's extremely frustrating to me because we haven't responded to it and it's like so many other things where the clarion has been sounded and nothing is being done that's on us and the and, and the more frequently that happens that we get encroached upon we get assaulted in any way and we don't do anything the more we get exalted assaulted We've got to take action. We've got to plant our flag. We've got to sit up and say, "This is where we, this is where we fight. This is where we draw the line in the sand. This is where we become the aggressor." Point blank, period. I'm telling you now. If I catch you trying to take assault or do anything to a black woman, I'm gonna catch a case. And it's going to be the worst case. I'm not trying to break it up. If you're trying to put a woman in the trunk, you're trying to drag in the trunk, I'm going to do what I do. That's got to be that level. The shit that I used to be willing to die for when I was young, there's got to be something of value now. That stake that I'm staking my claim on, and it's that black women are going to be safe in my presence. Starting with my wife, starting with uh, my children, starting with the women in my family, but extending out, black women are going to be safe in my presence to the point of my death. If you don't have something you're willing to die for, you're not fit to live anyway. And the shit that we have been willing to die for as black men growing up, blocks we don't own, what somebody said to us, but they, they, they just running amok with our women and we okay with it. Ladies, start paying attention to your surroundings. Purchase you a firearm. Get adequate training. When I say adequate, tra adequate training, I don't just mean going to a uh, shooting range. That's a good place to start. Uh, honing your skills of uh, loading uh, and firing your weapon and accurately firing your weapon, safety protocols, all of that. But you need tactical training. You need engaged training. You need uh, opposed training. You need training where while you're shooting and, and moving in your tactical uh, operations that there's gunfire around you, that there's things happening, that there's a possibility something can trip you up while you're doing it. Why? It gets your blood pumping. It gets your adrenaline going. It puts you more in a realistic uh, environment of what it's probably going to feel like when you're like that under assault and you've got to respond quickly. One of the biggest mistakes people make is thinking that they're going to be as calm under attack as they are at the firing range. And I promise you that's not how it goes down. You're shaking. The adrenaline's flowing. Your accuracy is not the same accuracy if you have not practiced firing under uh, duress through tactical training, through a bunch of other things. Also, get trained in hand-to-hand -hand combat and uh, being able to disable ass uh, attackers with one to two moves. Uh, 
these are things that need to be taught in the black community. These are things, these are things that I'm working on now with people who have these backgrounds that can train and create that. Because I tell you what, their kids are doing it. And I mean, their kids are doing it. You know, we're on video games. We, we doing, you know, TikTok and all that. Not that they aren't, but I'm telling you what I know in in large numbers, they're being trained for warfare. We need to train to protect ourselves because we are under attack. On that note, look, I'm gonna get ready to get out of here. Uh, again, as I said at, uh, at the beginning, if you believe in what I do and what we do at the Odyssey Project, please look in the description box and support our work. We need it more than ever before right now. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder of the day.